be obese. I want to smoke so I can double my risk of heart disease. I just can't get enough hydrogenated oil. Doesn't need a driver. I plan to ignore that. I just want to go a little more trans fats. I can increase my odds of coronary artery disease by about 23%. I just want to eat as many empty carbon as possible. Sounds ridiculous, right? We're glad it does. I like secondhand smoke. Increasing knowledge to improve public health, that's what we do. And we're serious about it. I hope to clog my arteries. The U.S. government recently unveiled a guide for healthy eating called MyPlate. Unfortunately, their plate mixes science with the influence of powerful agricultural interests. It's just not the recipe for healthy eating. So at Harvard School of Public Health, we introduced the healthy eating plate. Unlike their plate, our plate says that whole grains are better than refined grains. And some proteins are healthier than others. Their plate doesn't mention the beneficial fats. And it doesn't distinguish between potatoes and other much healthier vegetables. Their plate also recommends dairy at every meal, even though the evidence warns against it. Unlike our plate, their plate is silent about the benefits of healthy activities and the dangers of sugary drinks. Knowing what foods to eat and in what proportions will have a huge impact on our nation. And that, that, that is our special interest. Nearly one out of every three kids in the United States is overweight or obese. The average teenager consumes roughly 300 calories per day in sugary drinks. So Harvard School of Public Health helps schools in their efforts to remove these drinks. When schools do, there's an overall improvement in health. And when the sugary habit is broken on campus, they aren't as interested when off campus. Real results that leave our glass far more than half full. Many people know that there's good cholesterol and bad cholesterol, but what we're finding here at the Harvard School of Public Health is that even some of the good cholesterol can be bad for you. We've learned ways to differentiate between the truly good cholesterol and that which puts you at higher risk for cardiovascular disease. Better diagnostics lead to better understanding, which leads to useful lifestyle changes and better treatments, which leads to fewer deaths from heart disease, and obviously, that's a good thing. In China alone, they eat more than 127 million metric tons of white rice each year. White rice has a high glycemic index, which increases the risk of diabetes, which can cause stroke, heart, eye, and kidney disease, and even possibly death. The health problems could exceed the treatment capabilities of any healthcare system. So our programs in China, India, Tanzania, Kuwait, Kenya, Nigeria, Mexico, Costa Rica, Puerto Rico, seek to switch white rice and other refined carbohydrates for brown rice and other whole grains. At Harvard School of Public Health, we believe that prevention is better than treatment, because an ounce of prevention is better and cheaper than a pound of cure. This is the Curley Elementary School. It's a public school in Boston and there's something rather wonderful happening here. Okay, so here's what you're going to do. I need you to think in your brains right now about one food item that you think you know for sure is a healthy choice. They're eating healthier. So what you're going to be doing is having a conversation at your table about what foods are healthy and maybe what foods are not healthy. And that alone is starting to change everything. Do you want like a water? See, not so long ago, many of the kids at Curly, like many kids in this country, were served meals that were nutritionally empty, too sugary, or too processed. Sometimes the foods that we want to be healthy are not healthy. Harvard School of Public Health, Project Red, and the Boston Public Health Commission got together to help. They created a program called the CHEF Initiative. Harvard School of Public Health analyzed menus and recipes to ensure that they met standards of healthy eating grounded in the latest research. The chef had to make sure it looked good and tasted good or kids wouldn't eat it. And Harvard School of Public Health developed a plate waste study. By measuring what kids were leaving on their plates, 
it was obvious they were eating more vegetables, whole grains, and good stuff. Today, teachers and parents have noticed that the kids of Curly are doing better in school. It's a program that's rolling out to other schools across Massachusetts. Harvard School of Public Health believes that if kids develop the habit of healthy eating, they will carry it with them throughout their adult lives. And that just might be one of the most valuable, life-changing lessons learned at school.